Hey folks, uh, welcome to the podcast. Today I had a great chat with a guy called David Royston Lee and David is a leadership coach and a personal branding expert and uh, he wrote a great book on personal branding. So we had a chat around uh, what the essentials are of personal branding, how to tell your story, get it out there, become more visible and build your online brand, which is extremely important nowadays. So I hope you enjoyed the conversation. Hey, it's Lewis. Welcome to the podcast. Enjoy our conversations anytime, anywhere. Cool, and we're live. Good. David, thank you very much for joining me on the podcast. Um, my pleasure, my pleasure. So what is your background? Uh, I'm a psychologist by profession, um, but I'm also a recruiter and I, an HR director and a management consultant and a marketing person. So <laughs> I've, I've gone through quite a few different kind of transformations in nice. my life. So you started out doing psychology at university and then... That's right. Psychology at university. Yeah. Uh, and rather than join a, a psychometric firm, as most psychologists do, I decided I didn't want to do that. I was interested in people. And I went to my local employment agency uh, uh, to find a job and they offered me one. Oh, nice. So uh, within about well, virtually a year, I was the operations manager of this recruitment agency but uh, the interesting thing for me which is what I do now is all about is I had my kind of epiphany if you can call it that uh, probably the first day of of my work in the recruitment agency because I was given the graduates right after (laughs) and uh, uh, you know and I didn't realize that was the the job that no one wanted. They doing the grads. They don't have no idea what they. Uh, they, they have no do. idea what they want, and you don't make any money out of them. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> baptism of fire. Absolutely, and I thought as this cocky psychologist, all they had to do was look at their educational background and you know see what they uh, what they did at school, what what courses they did, what university they went to, what course they, and bingo, I'd be able to channel them into that job there or the other one there yeah but within the first four people you know i got things like yeah well my my parents said i needed to do accountancy (laughs) uh i hate it but you know that's why i did it at university or i you know i i done this course in whatever law i i really don't like it i I want something else yeah yeah so you learned more about people in that first couple of weeks in your whole degree course in psychology, probably. Yeah. And the thing was, it started making me think, so how do people really find what they want to do? And that became the thing that I've been doing for the rest no, of my life. No, it's interesting. I mean, I meet so many people. And mo- most people have no idea what they want to do. Or you end up doing a bunch of different things. We have, like you, and actually probably eventually like me, three careers in your life. Yeah. Um, and your parents do tend to push you into something, you know, a, a profession because it's safe. and It's safe. That's the point. But do you enjoy it? And, and most people, I did correct me if I'm wrong, but most people I meet don't actually enjoy what they do. No. And that's, that's my mission, to try to help people uh, find a job that they really enjoy and want to do and get you know, a lot of satisfaction out of it because I have the premise you only live once. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So why not enjoy what you're doing? No, that's true. Very true. So after your, your graduate recruitment stint, did you stay in the industry? I Over? stayed in the industry. I became the operations uh, the director at the time. And then uh, I got involved with the Institute of Employment Consultants as it was then. Okay, yeah. Uh, and... Uh, on their learning and development side and realized uh, there was a big job there, got more and more involved. And eventually, uh, after about three or four years of the agency, I, I'd done everything I really needed to do. Yeah, yeah. I'd uh, pro- professionalized it, so to speak. Uh, I, I trained people in different things. And basically, the, the six branches at that time 
had good managers, I, I'd made myself redundant, really. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I got more interested in all the work that needs to be done to professionalise the industry. So when Brilliant. I was offered the job to run it, I grabbed it. Great, great. And so how long overall did you stay in the recruitment sector? before? Um, probably about seven years, six, seven years. Great. Uh, you know, the last two, I was doing my MSc in occupational psychology while I was at the Institute. Right, right, right. So, um, and, uh, and my thesis was on the recruitment industry, actually. Oh, okay, interesting, yeah. interesting. Yeah. And then now, so you just published a book. Yeah, well, 10 years ago, actually. Was that 10 years ago? Yeah. Wow. It's been translated into seven languages. Wow. Including Greek and Korean. Wow, amazing. So it's quite... And then well, you sell it on Amazon and yeah 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 mainly through Amazon yeah yeah it's it's published by Pearson's great and how how what like arrived you at writing a book and uh, actually it was it, it was uh, on a on a program with some friends of mine who were setting up a kind of um, uh, a group of headhunters. And uh, they had a kind of away weekend, basically a jolly. And I met someone on that weekend who became my co-author on the book. He was a headhunter Brilliant. with Hydrix. And uh, he was talking about writing a book. And I said, Funny, funnily enough, I've been thinking about that. And we decided that Brand You was the book to write. Awesome. Awesome. So what is personal branding? So personal branding isn't what a lot of people think it is which in, in, when you're looking for a job. It's yeah. not about deciding what you're going to be. It's about actually understanding who you are. So we're, what we're concentrating on is the authentic you, <laughs> yeah. not the one that you'd like to find. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, because many people have this uh, idea that, uh, it, it, you know, they're, they're attending to their personal branding. Well, sorry, <laughs> yeah. you know, you can't, you can't sort of um, make it up. It's got to be real yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's got to be authentic. So that was the reason for, for that book, because by the time I'd, uh, I'd written that book, I'd been working at KPMG as a management consultant for many years, working with a lot of people in the last recession, big right, recession yeah. in the 80s. Yeah. Uh, where they were being made redundant for the first time. Right. And they okay. didn't know what they wanted to do. So I was dealing with about eight people every day for about God knows how long, yeah, about four yeah. years, to be honest. Right. So I, I, I created a way of helping them to understand who they were, what they wanted, and, if you like, help them to, to kind of carve a... A, a journey for themselves out of their future. Interesting. And you and you did, and you wrote this book before Instagram. Yeah. And, and Instagram is interesting because um, you know the big criticism is that people are portraying you know who they want to be, their best self, their best life. Um, I, yeah. What, what do you think about that? Have you seen a change or? Um, I actually think. Uh, well, it, interestingly, the this authenticity thing, which actually has been much more in the news in the last five years. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Whereas before, you know, it, it was all pretend to be who you were. And all my work with organisations were, they were saying, well, this is our culture and had all these grandiose terms saying how wonderful they were. And you go in and it's a cesspit, really. <laughs> you know, full of people stabbing each other in the back. Yeah, yeah, and yet, yeah. apparently, you know, we're all collegiate and everything else. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, it, 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 that's that's changed now because in today's world, uh, you know, graduates, certain graduates, new people in the industry, even those into their 20s and early 30s, they walk in and they can assess quite quickly whether this is a good place to be or not. A hundred percent. You can also, I mean, you can also do your research on people before. You can look on social media, Absolutely. online. I mean, yeah. And you can see what's happening in that organization. Yeah. And you can yeah. talk to people, you know, through 
LinkedIn, through everything now, yeah, before yeah. you go, and I encourage people to do that, you know, see if uh, through your contacts, have you got any contacts with people in that organization? Talk to them first before you go for the interview. Yeah. Because if nothing else, you're going to be the person who, who's actually going to say in the interview, well, I was talking to one of your people and they said da, 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 da. And it, it shocks the interviewer. Oh, oh, and, absolutely. And, and actually, if nothing else, it reminds the interviewer of who you are. Yeah. So even more, I mean, this is even more important now with social media and getting your brand right on social media, online, you know, making sure you're, 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 you know, you've got a good LinkedIn profile and all that kind of stuff. That's right. And the LinkedIn profile actually needs to be written, not like a CV. If you notice on LinkedIn, a lot of people kind of put their CV on it. Yeah. It yeah. really should be more about who you are and what you do and what you want to do. You know, so that you. you so can, would you not do your? You so how would you do it? Would you do the the career history, obviously. But then would you do like the, well the profile at the beginning would be so what am I into now what I'm what am I really interested in uh, okay it might be a little bit uh, difficult if you're in the job that you don't want to be in <laughs> you might, and yeah. someone from that company looks at your LinkedIn yeah, profile yeah. but you know yeah. try to be you know I think it's really important because. For LinkedIn, certainly, it should be one of those places where you're more you and people are thinking, actually, he looks like a good guy. Yeah, yeah. You know. But people are, people have a very different opinion on it. I met I met someone at a training course the other day and, and she, you know, she didn't want to connect with, she was very, very selective with who she connected with. Yeah. She's very um, minimalist with what she put on her profile. Um, but she was hoping to find her next role and she was in a role at the moment and she was very concerned about her colleagues. You know, she didn't want to connect with me because I'm a headhunter and what would my colleagues think if they saw? Ruled by fear. Yeah. That's what a lot of people are are, are nowadays and it's one of the things that I'm researching at the moment, this whole area of fear and taking risks because there's this whole... Fear of of what? Fear of... Well, like that person, yeah, yeah, virtually yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah. fear of, uh, of being present anywhere, hiding behind uh, a minimal CV. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. how how is anyone going to actually find this person and actually know whether she's any good? Yeah, unless yeah. you start talking about it. Absolutely. The thing with LinkedIn is all the profiles are public, and you only you'll only really want to be on there if you want to be found. I mean, the point for me of LinkedIn is a professional networking site, and it's is there for people to find you. Exactly. And the other social media platforms, you know, you can be quite close and it's, you know, it's your social group, Facebook, whatever. Yeah. It's all about uh, building your network of people that you want to be linked to. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, get encouragement for, from, support from. And of course, if you're looking for a job, naturally you start yeah. Uh, contacting people in your network and possibly outside it through your contacts on LinkedIn. Yeah. So, would you think then for, for professional LinkedIn platforms for your for your personal professional branding, the place to really like focus and make sure it's? I think it should be. Uh, it isn't as much as it it could be simply because people use it just like a a, a place to put their CV, if you see yeah, yeah, So I don't yeah. need to write another one because yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. sick and tired of writing them. Yeah, no, that's that's true. That's true. And so what are the like what are the essentials around personal branding? What do people need to be well, like, really doing? Of course, the, the thing that is different about personal branding from a CV, a CV is just about what you've done in the past. Right. So it, it, it's a one-dimensional picture of you that is purely based in the past. What a personal branding should be building a kind of three-dimensional picture of you. So it should also tell people, uh, well, one of the things that most people aren't very good at is actually knowing what their talents are. Yeah. yeah. You know, you've got your skills that you've learned, uh, you've got your degrees maybe, or courses that you've done, but what, are your actual talents and do people really understand what their talents are plus also 
what are your values? You know, if I asked, most people I asked, if I asked straight out, yeah, yeah. what are your values? There's lots of umming and errings, and then they'll come out with the things they think should be a good value, yeah, yeah. not really what their values are. So you have to, you have to, uh, when you're developing your brand, you have to start with an analysis of yourself, not if you, which I think most people do. They think, here I am, now I want to be there, so I have to create yeah, a kind yeah. of presence that allows me to be in this place. Yeah, yeah. But actually you need to start with understanding who you are first. Yeah. Who am I first? Where am I going? And then how am I going to get there? Whereas most people do it the other way around. How am I going to get there? Well, they look at like, I don't know, I want to be that person or I want to be a CFO or and how have they got there. And they look at yeah. you know this career path, which is a fair way to do it. But, but yeah, very few people look introspectively and think about like yeah. what motivates me, what do I like to do or, you know. Yeah, I, I do a lot of work with leadership development. The difficulty that a lot of people have, even quite senior people in the world, uh, is their belief in what a leader should be is based on people that have led them. Yes. Yeah. Rather than actually understanding the leader in themselves and who they are as a leader, they try to emulate someone who is, well, I've been working with someone recently who, because their boss is a bully, as soon as they got into a position of responsibility, guess what? Started bullying. Interesting. Yeah. Because they thought this was what you did as a leader. Yeah. No, no. It's a go to. Yeah. I guess you, yeah, your go to style is who you, yeah. If you're lucky, you might learn how not to do things from those types of people. Yeah. Um, so the key uh, thing I, I think uh, that I think I need to say is you need to be, t- get a sense of detachment from what you're doing and actually understand yourself and how you interact with the world. Yeah. So yeah. you need a bit of a gap. So at, at any point in time, you're, you're actually thinking, here I am, this is the world, how am I really interacting with it? Or am I pretending to be someone else? Because I think that looks good. Yeah, yeah. And then how do you go about communicating that story or telling that story? Well, actually, one of the things we do in the personal branding book is we talk about stories. You know, everything's about stories. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, you know, as a recruiter, that you say, well, give me a, a time when, you know, and you ask them to tell a little story. Well, I try to get people to 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 identify what are called crucible moments okay. in their in So their like careers. an aha moment. Aha yeah. moments or or times which they they really felt they were in flow. Yeah, yeah. Using a psychological No, term. I love that, yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, and then talk about that. So we identify help people to identify a number of different stories. Now out of those stories, when they start talking about what they did, how they did it with whom, in what situations, you start to build a picture and you can find out the talents from that, you can start, you can find out the values, yeah, and yeah. you can also get a sense of actually this kind of environment is the kind that actually suits this person down to the ground. And then what they can, so they can use that knowledge to think about what job they'd be most suited to or... That's right. Yeah. And, and, and the thing is, it, you know, it, it, though, honing those stories so that they're clear about what those stories are saying about them, yeah, and they're yeah. real, they're yeah. not pretend, uh, they're incredibly useful when you're, uh, they're coming in front of someone like you as a recruiter. Absolutely. No, it's all about telling the story. I mentioned this like almost every podcast, but we did, uh, we, we did a, a, quite a bit of uh, training on storytelling. Mm. And it's so powerful. Very important. You know, really, really powerful and, stuff. And, you know, you know that people are blooming hopeless at it. Oh, yeah. I know you can always improve. But, you know, you get put in, I don't know, if, it's, if you're in an interview scenario or you've met someone for the first time and, and they're uncomfortable situations, which a lot of people don't like to be in, and, and their mind goes a little bit 
blank or they, they default to like the technical aspects you know i went to kpmg i did my aca i'm a yeah yeah, yeah. you know All of that. rather than really you know telling a great story and because you feel a, a much more affinity to someone when you you've bought into this story yeah sure i mean it's yeah really powerful stuff yeah and so you, and stories of course the, the most important uh, stage to get your stories right is at the beginning of your career yeah, where yeah, you yeah. don't have work stories, but you have life stories yeah, that you can true. tell a recruiter, and that recruiter can say, oh, that's interesting. What were they doing there? That shows that they've got a bit of gumption. That shows that they've, they've actually got something that I would quite like to develop in this guy. Yeah, yeah. Do you think now in kind of the age of you know technology where you have LinkedIn and you know it's super easy to find you know, every CFO in the financial services industry in a few minutes, you know, to really stand out now, do you think this storytelling has, has got more and more important and more weight to it? I think so. I think it, it, being able to tell the stories, g- genuine stories, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, a, in a clear way, so you give people a, a real understanding of not just what you've done, but what you're capable of doing, yeah, which yeah. I think is important. Uh, that is that's the goal yeah definitely so the CV can get you through the door once you start meeting people and you're interviewing then the storytelling and making sure your brand is on point will ultimately secure you the the role exactly exactly yes fine and then so how how would one become more visible so I mentioned it just now but you know if we if we do a search for someone that I mean the world is our our talent pool now, right? I mean, with, with the internet, with technology, with LinkedIn, you know, suddenly you're hunting from a global talent pool rather than just the black book and yeah. and stuff. So any advice on, on how one can, can become more visible and maybe get across their brand better? I think, I, I believe in the new uniqueness of everybody. The difficulty often uh, when you're looking for a job is because you want to be all things to every recruiter, you kind of like wrong word, but blandify. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. Yeah, by yeah. that, blandify your CV so it can catch lots of things rather than actually be quite honest and say that is what I do and I do it in that way. Yeah, yeah. and and I think it's about it's it, it goes back to what I was saying a bit earlier about risk. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Taking a risk and being clear about the key things that you're you're really interested in and what it is you do. What do you do? How do you do it? And in what ways? Uh, this... And really push on that and be a bit of a maverick. Yeah. No, no, it's, it's good. And you'll stand out. I think it's uh, going to risk. It's very risky. Yeah. Because um, if you, you meet a lot of people in there um, – you know, they might want to change industries or change careers slightly. And, and so it's very hard to do. And, you know, they're more likely to get another job if they kind of stick to their area of specialism. But so I feel it's a lot of people think it's a minefield of, you know, what what do I do? How do I pitch myself? How do I move from, you know, here to here? How do I do it? How do I but, brand? But the thing is, you see, most of the people I've worked with uh, have been sort of people mid-career who have decided I've had enough of being a partner in a big accountancy firm and decided to do something completely different, as an example. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we do, you know, we do board level search and, and but you still you still see a lot of people, they want to, maybe they want to move industry. Yeah. Which is challenging. Um, maybe they just want to do something completely different, um, which is also tough. It's, I think it's it's the I know, courage or... Well, uh, but the thing is, it's, it's interesting because, of course, there's the verticals, if you see what Yeah, I mean. yeah, yeah. But, but what's going on... So verticals on, on, just being, so finance, IT, marketing, whatever sales. Whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, uh, but it's the horizontals I'm working on, <laughs> yes, in a yeah. sense, is what you can do in each of those verticals. Yeah. You know, what you do in, I don't know, chemical engineering, <laughs> yeah, Actually, how you operate with people in managing that business can equally apply to any other, actually. Absolutely. Absolutely. With very little change. But people are scared. They think by moving out of a vertical, they've got to change everything. But actually, no. 
What do you think about just turning it around slightly? If you're hiring someone and they've come from a slightly, you know, talk about the technical skills, they could probably do the job but slightly left field. Um, I, I, I found that certainly given the current economic environment and various things that are happening, um, people are very scared to make a bad hire or take a risk on someone. Um, but given what you've just described, I think if, if companies are looking at the, the softer skills and the wider piece, they might actually end up making better hires. Much right. better hires, I would maintain. Yeah. It's yeah. this issue that, you know, of what investment banking, dare I say, you know, uh, uh, where do people look Yeah. normally? What universities do they look at normally? Top ones. What yeah. do they get? Yeah. All the people are exactly the same as everybody else. Yeah. And then they wonder why they can't compete with the others in the market because they're hiring from the same pool. It's ridiculous. If they could actually open their eyes and start thinking about some of the potential mavericks that are on the edge of their their kind of uh, recruitment pool yeah, yeah. Who, who've got something a little bit different to offer. I mean... It's, it's a bit like when I was at Ogilvy's as the HR director there, uh, you know, we always hired from Oxbridge. How come? Because that's what we did. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But we got the same people. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Rory Sutherland, who, who's uh, the vice president, you know, uh, there now, who I knew at the time, you know, or, if you look now, they, they hire thirds from another university. Really? Right, because wow. they're looking for... Something that else. This magic stardust it's, thing. That's... It's, the, it's the creativity. Yeah, yeah. Rather yeah. than uh, the academic excellence. It always used to be academic excellence. That doesn't mean to say you're going to be any good at business. Very true. Very true. So what, what do you think of the psychometric stuff? Personality questionnaires, the, well, the online games? Well, I'm a psychologist, games. so I can't say very much. <laughs> but uh, all I but do you think it's valuable for hiring? You know, uh, it, it is valuable for hiring. Yeah. Uh, as a guide right. and as one part of the process, okay, not yeah. the be all and end all, yeah. which it used to be. Where I, I remember uh, talking to some uh, business people, and they would hire everybody with the same profile, and then they wondered why there was chaos. Oh, so, so you have like a standard: we will hire someone with this personality yeah, set, basically, and that's it. you know, yeah. a, a high-powered salesman. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you can imagine it, an office full of those people. Yeah. They're 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 stabbing each other in the back the whole time. Yeah. And actually not selling very much. No, definitely. But so what? So how would you so, to, to think about if you're hiring someone and you want this magic stardust creativity? Um, are there are there tools that they can use rather than just seems like a nice chap or nice girl and? Well, I I, I, I go back to the stories. Yeah, I, go, yeah. I always go back to the stories. I'd rather, the thing is with psychometrics is, of course, what, what is happening when you, you do a psychometric? You're being compared with other people yeah. and you're being put in kind of boxes, really. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I'm more of the, the view that if I want to find the uniqueness of the individual and find, is that something that actually we're looking for for the future? What do we need, not just to fill that position now, but what do we need if we develop that person? Where do we want to go with that person? What do we want to achieve as a business? You know, what's the competitive landscape like? What's the economic situation like? Yeah. What do we need in the future? Because we've got to be recruiting for that, not just filling a job. Yeah. And do you think humans are better at that than uh, computer <laughs> algorithms and big pools of data? And uh, I think you need both. I yeah, think, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, because of course yeah. you need some kind of basis on which to to filter out the ones who maybe doesn't don't suit your organisation. Yeah, yeah. But I yeah. would certainly look at things like values yeah, that, yeah you know very important if you're hiring a ceo or a cfo Absolutely. for an organization yeah because they will alter it because they're in a senior position and it could disrupt it too much that's true yeah. but then in other situations you you want disruptors to come in because your your organization your effectiveness is starting to not be as good as it used to be you're getting a bit old 
and a bit decrepit and you need to get more life into your business and you need to move it on into this digital age. Well, you're not going to do that if you keep hiring the same people you've always hired and use the same recruitment process you've always used. And are you seeing people are still doing that? Or? Yes, because it's safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's safe. We get safe people, but safe people aren't going to end up uh, creating an Uber or an Airbnb. No, no. You're just going to I mean, be doing the same old, same old. Yeah. I think I was remember Steve Jobs, um, there was an interview with him, and they asked him, you know, how do you come up with these crazy ideas and new t- and new products and he said well I find people with maniacal tendencies I lock them in a room for a day and then open the door and out floods all of these amazing ideas and yeah I'm working with organizations now who you know get a cross-section of their staff they give them a project to do and they do it and then they don't interfere with it they let them do it literally there's no uh, uh, senior management interference it sounds frightening, sounds risky, but uh, the, the, what has happened in this particular organisation I'm thinking of, it's, um, it's, it's created an amazing difference. Awesome. No, amazing. What's harder, though, is asking, let's say, a mid-level manager to hire a maverick. And if they get that wrong, they're out the door. Kind well, of thing. You know, that's, I, that's a challenging... Yeah, but, but the middle, I suppose it depends who the mid-level manager is, yeah. because, of course, we all tend to recruit in our own image. Absolutely. No, most people do, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. We so, like people like ourselves. Yeah. yeah. So the thing is, you again, that detachment I talked about, when you're recruiting, you've got to be really detached in terms of, am I... Do I just, because I like this guy, I've got something in common with this guy. It's the bias thing that you were yeah, talking yeah. about. Yeah, uh, the Daniel Kahneman. And yeah, all, all, all of yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, you know, that is, you have to be really careful about that. Yeah, yeah. So do you think then, to sum up, um, the HR director, the CEO, the senior leaders need to put the, the right structure in place to enable them to take a risk on a maverick? or? or I, I, I think it, it's increasingly important in today's world where things are moving faster and faster you need to bring in new ideas innovation needs to be at the center of organizations not something that you you play with on the edges yeah, yeah it's definitely. got to it's got to be part of of uh, the way you conduct your business talking about innovation you started a new company called future resume yeah um what is it well, it's basically uh, goes right back to those uh, that first few days in my recruitment agency, <laughs> right. where uh, I, I just relied on the CV, and ever since then the CV has got in the way of helping people to get a decent job. Yeah, because yes. it's all ba- ba- based in the past, and if you think about CVs, they were developed when people had jobs for life. So all you did was look at what they did in the past and you'd know what they were going to be doing in the future. In today's world, people change jobs massively. Yeah. So you need a different process. So all I'm trying to say by with future resume is I'm starting the process. I'm just throwing a pebble in the pool of recruitment to say, shouldn't we be thinking beyond just a CV? Why are we just looking at the past where uh, and not looking at the talents, not looking at the values of the person, not looking at the stories that we've talked about? Yeah. But what we've so what I'm saying is we need a three dimensional picture created, and that's what Future Resume is trying to do. We just add the present and the future to the past of the CV. Interesting. So, so how does it then actually work in practice? So I come and see you, or I go on your... Well, it's all digital, of course, in today's... I go on your... I, I visit your website. Yes. Uh, do you have an app as well? Or? Uh, it's, it's, it's on... Uh, yes, it's yeah. basically you can use it on your, Amazing. your smartphone. Amazing. And then, and then so what, what do I... So as a hiring manager, as, yeah. because we're, that's what we're aiming it at, yeah. uh, what we're, we're saying is... We have, we have the CV, we get them to follow some interview questions, and we create a future resume as well as the CV. 
Oh, awesome. So it's targeted at, so I'm hiring. Yes. I receive applicants yes. and, then I, and I, I ask them to complete the questions. Absolutely. Awesome. Or, or, and, and you and the applicant get a copy of the future resume. Great. It's completely as the person wrote it. We don't alter it at all. So it's right. authentic. Yeah. And what, it, what it's there for is, in a sense, to reduce the need to have the first interview. You know, the bit where you find out something about the person. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've got the stories in there. We've got the values. We've got the the talents that they've identified. So it, it, it enables a hiring manager to reduce the, the time spent interviewing people. Right, okay. And so that they move up straight on to the second interview. And do they have in mind a baseline profile that these people should be matching? Well, actually, they might, yeah. but I, I prefer to su- suggest, if, if there's a little bit of the consultancy coming into it, yeah. suggest that they look at the applicants that they've got, because, of course, going back to what we said earlier about yeah. the blandness uh, and recruiting people in your own image, and maybe you need something with a bit of spice, someone a bit different, that you actually look at these candidates and you think, oh, actually, I wouldn't have thought of interviewing that guy before, but he sounds quite interesting and she's actually brilliant. But initially with the CV, I wouldn't have seen it. And would they have seen the CV first? Or they you... might have seen the CV first. Yeah. But, you know, because the difficulty, of course, we're having is it's something new and everybody's used to just using CVs. So people are all a bit reticent. Oh, I'm not sure about this. I'll just rely on my psychometrics and my CV and my gut feel or whatever. Or yeah. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. And all I'm trying to do is is say, come on, let's let's try and disrupt this recruitment process a little bit. Oh, I love it. I love and, it. And see what happens. And how long have you been going for? Well, we've only just started. Uh, great. We launched January this year. Perfect. And gone well. It's starting. People, we're getting a, actually. From a LinkedIn point of view, yeah. it's all through LinkedIn we're ah, working So the, mar- the marketing activity and branding and... Yeah, everything's through that, right? Uh, okay. which is relatively new for me. But So, so you, as in even the, the, the actual questions and... Well, everything, uh, you don't go through LinkedIn, you go through our website, yeah, but yeah. all our marketing... Fine, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but we're getting, you know, the hit rate we're getting is quite massive and we're, we're aiming at a new... Tech, new techie companies, you know, small ones, yeah, as well as the big ones, as well as the middle ones. We're actually testing at the moment. And you've had a good buy-in from the like startup tech. Yeah, well, they're, they're of course more intra. They've got no. They're history. open to new things. No history. Yeah, yeah, so no, I love that. Anything that's new, uh, uh, they're more interested in looking at. Yeah, and did you think they'll make a better hire as a result? I think so, uh, because yeah. what. What they're, they're given is more information on less people. So they spend right, okay. a bit of their time yeah. actually thinking about, actually, this guy, you know, we can build a, some really interesting teams with these kind of people, with these kind of attributes. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Well, good luck with that. Thank you. I hope that goes well. Um, thank you very much for joining me. Um, and uh, yeah look forward to speaking to you again okie dokie thank you cheers hey folks thanks for listening don't forget to subscribe in all the usual places bye